What is going on guys, Pansy here and welcome to part 2 of my ultimate hunting guide. In this video we are going over leveling up hunting. In part 1 we covered the basics like class selection, gear, buffs and etc. And in part 3 we'll be covering the money making portion of hunting and everything pertaining to that. Make sure you check out the links for those two videos if you haven't caught them yet in the description down below or in the pinned section once they release. The focus of this video is going to be giving you all the information you need to start leveling up your hunting. I'm going to assume you watched my part one, so we're not going over those basics, but we're going to go over everything else related to leveling up itself. So leveling up hunting is not a difficult thing to do. It's actually a skill that goes really quickly and it can be fun. It's nice seeing all those levels come in so fast. So. When it comes to leveling, make sure you got all your gear, all your buffs ready. This is going to be something that will take practice. Hunting is an active skill and over the course of many hours, you'll get much better at it. So don't worry if you don't get the hang of it right away. Just keep at it and you'll get it in no time. Now, one of the first things a player will notice when they start hunting is, damn, why do I only have three bullets instead of four like the other guy? Well, there's a reason for that. As soon as you start out hunting from the very beginning, you'll have three bullets. After you hit Guru 1, that's when you get four bullets. Now you'll notice, as a fun fact, the rate at which you're leveling as soon as you hit Guru 1 actually feels like it goes up considerably because you're doing more DPS with those four bullets. So there's nothing else you need to know other than the fact, hit Guru 1, you'll get the four bullets. Alright guys, now when it comes to leveling up hunting, you want to use as many life XP buffs as possible and as, as you can afford. You don't want to go wasting your cake buff or anything, but make sure you're pretty efficient. If you're going to use cake buff and maximize your life XP, use DPS elixirs as well, so you increase your kills per hour, or go more XP. But in terms of life XP buffs, I'm going to name out a few just to help you out. So for food, we have seafood cron meal. For elixirs, which will stack with your DPS elixirs, we have the elixir of flowing time. Then you have the Life XP scroll, or you can use the Book of Life. Then you have Laura's Warm Black Tea. If you have it, use it. And I'd recommend you use it sparingly because it's really nice with the 10% gathering item drop rate. It increases your money per hour as well. So you might want to use it when you're uh, going for hardcore cash or leveling. But I prefer to use it while I was leveling because when we're killing these mobs that we're leveling on, they drop a lot of enhancement materials and stuff. And this is really great. Then you have the Trent's tier on use effect. Make sure you go unlock the Trent's tier. It's really nice to have. I have a video on how to unlock it. I'll link it in the description down below. But... You can use multiple alchemy stones at the same time. Just equip one, use the on use effect, then move to the next one, use the on use effect. Then finally, use your cons heart for the passive buff. Then you have perfume of swiftness. You could use another perfume like a spirit perfume elixir, but I prefer perfume of swiftness because that's some juicy life skill XP and it gives you five gathering. It is an expensive option, so just keep that in mind. If you can't afford it, you can't afford it. Don't worry too much about this. Then you have the cake buff, which uh, <laughs> you should use sparingly because those are really, really good, especially when you have 100 extra mastery for life skills. That is huge. So make sure you use it sparingly. If you want to use it for leveling, you can, but if you do, just maximize your DPS. Then for a minor buff, you can use GM blessings uh, as they gave them out. They're, they're not too big, but you know, any percentage is a percentage, right? And lastly, make sure you have your life skill pets equipped. Make sure you have a hedgehog. Those really help out. And whatever I missed, there must be some other life skill buffs out there like the Kafra's journal, right? The Kafra's journal is really nice to have as well. If you haven't unlocked it, I recommend you do so if you're a life skiller. 10% across the board indefinitely. So yeah, if I missed anything, you know, share it in the comment section down below. All right, guys, now let's talk about where you need to grind in order to level up hunting fast. There is only one and only one spot that you should be grinding at and leveling hunting in the game. Now, once upon a time, it used to be different. So if you looked up an older guide, it might say like Feather Wolves. But right now, there is only one undisputed king. And that is the Grass Rhinos. The difference between the XP you get at Grass Rhinos and any other spot is not marginal. It is huge. It is a huge multiplier. For example, the second best is probably only 75% of the XP rate at Grass Rhinos. The amount of XP you get here is on parallel. So when you start out, even if you're a beginner one, this is where you want to start. All right, guys, before we get started with the actual leveling process, I want to explain how the XP is earned and what affects the drops. So here we have a rhino. I'm going to butcher it. And when you butcher it, that's when you get the loot. Now, this loot is based on your mastery, your hunting mastery, and also gathering item drop rate. There are a few factors which go into what is calculated, but your gathering mastery itself is not one of them. So... No matter how high your gathering mastery is, it has no effect here. The only thing is going to be your hunting mastery, your gathering item drop rate, and of course, the pet hedgehog. 
So as you can see here, this is one drop of meat, but we got another drop. This is because of the hedgehog. Now, in addition to just the loot, we also got more XP. So you see these green icons. These are the hunting skill XP. So whenever you loot these and you accept them, your hunting XP goes up because that's how you receive the XP. All right, now let's butcher our rhino without the hedgehog out. As you see, we got less meat and less loot overall because there's no hedgehog to proc. And we got less skill XP. Now, you don't always have to get two or three skill XP. It is RNG there. So as you can see, having a hedgehog is really important and does affect your leveling. All right, guys, now I'm going to show you the spots where you can find the grass rhinos. So this area is called Narcian. It is directly west of Odraxia. This is the premier spot to be hunting. So close to town. It has all the kind of different spots you need. XP money a combination of both you know this is the best spot to be at for leveling so grass rhinos are found in three spots and this is the first one it is north of narcian it is all the way up here this is a really nice spot it has a high density of rhinos and if you come a little bit southeast you'll have shadowables and it's important to have them nearby so you can do the quest um, that you get randomly by hunting narcian mobs that's called bonus a hunting quest for panicked horses as i explained in part one so this is a spot right here as you can see there are a lot of rhinos this is a nice spot where you can pull you know anywhere from like two to five rhinos at a time or kill them one at a time depending on what you feel like doing and you can come through all around here i'm down here there's one over there back through this way get these and come back up north and this is a really small loop, and I don't think you'll ever run out of rhinos unless you're going hella fast, which I've never done before. So this is my favorite place to be. This is my preference because I like the density and the distance of them, and it's just really comfy. And right here are these shadow walls, and it's really convenient to have them so close so I can get that quest done whenever it comes up and maintain that buff pretty much indefinitely. But there are times when my RNG wasn't so good. Then the second spot is directly south of the first one. This is also north of the Narcian node right here. And there are grass rhinos all throughout this region. Along with them, there are verdure deer and bucks that run around. Uh, just keep note of them. But it's not too bad having them around. If you accidentally do shoot one, go ahead and go gather it because, you know, that is money. <laughs> but if you are going for pure XP, you want to focus on these grass rhinos. So all throughout here, you have grass rhinos. There are some shadow lions around here because it is a similar rotation, but just ignore them. Just do your rhinos and come all the way around here to the north. And you have the shadow wolves right here if you want to kill them for the quest. And the third spot is over here. This is directly between Narcian and Odraxia, starting around here and going all the way through here, south of the road and coming back. So this probably has the highest number of grass rhinos and you can do massive pulls. The only downside is being east of this river is that you'll find grass beetles or bush thicket beetles, whatever they're called, uh, sprinkled throughout here. And your musket loves just locking onto them and start shooting. It will waste your DPS. They'll come in and block your shots and it gets really annoying. So just keep a note of that and try to avoid shooting them as much as possible. But as you can see, there are a ton of grass rhinos here. They go all the way throughout here. So you can do massive pulls of them. And it is also a good spot to be leveling up at. And you can come down south here. And there's a couple here. So watch out for that lion. But anyway, this is the third spot. So of the three spots, you can pick and choose whichever one that you're most comfortable at. I like to do this one because I don't do terribly big pulls. Whereas over here, you can probably do more. This one, it's a bit spread out, but has a lot of deer in between, but no bush thicket beetles to annoy me. So, I mean, you know, pick and choose whichever one that's comfortable to you. All right, guys, now let's get to the actual hunting portion where you're killing the rhinos and how to do it efficiently. So make sure you have all your gear on. You have your hunter's clothes for the DP and the mastery. You have your artifacts and the artifact light zone set if you can afford it and whatever gear you might have pertaining to hunting. And make sure you have five attack, five movement speed, five crit and five gathering. 
Then you want to make sure you have all your DPS elixir buffs going. So whatever elixirs that you can afford and spare for hunting, make sure you use them. Like for example, Lethal Assassin for the back attack damage. And, and you can check out part one of the hunting guide where I listed out all the buffs and pick and choose from there. So now when it comes to the actual hunting portion where you're killing the grass rhinos, there's a few ways you can do it. First, let's go one by one. And so I can exp explain a little bit about the grass rhino. When they're facing you, you'll do very little damage because you don't have the back attack modifier to help you out. Back attacks do about 150% if I remember correctly and crits do 250%. I believe that's how the modifiers work. Anyway, whenever you're doing it one by one, you want to try to start off from a distance and shoot them from the back. And getting a back attack in the beginning is really nice. But whenever they turn and start running at you, then you're going to be doing frontal attacks, which is why it's more efficient to be pulling multiple at a time. And I'll explain that momentarily. So let's start off with that one over there. We got two back attacks in before he turned around and started hitting us. And they like to do this dashing thing where they're going right through you. So it's really easy to get multiple back attacks on them. They don't turn around too quickly. Sometimes they'll only go one step and turn around and do that but they just go through this attack sequence there's no cc or anything you really need to worry about with these guys and their damage is pretty low as well so i wouldn't be too worried about the dps you're receiving even when you have a lot of them attacking you unlike shadow wolves and shadow lions uh, you really get tickled by these guys compared to them now generally in hunting uh, getting hit isn't really a big deal even with the high dps mobs but make sure you have a decent um hunter's clothes to provide you that dp now, when it comes to actually uh, killing them, you want to just get those back attacks and they do a ton of damage, especially if they stack up with crit. Now, you might see me doing a lot more damage than what you do when you first start out, but your DPS really depends on what kind of buffs you have and how efficiently you're utilizing your time. So if you're in a crouch state like this, it is always going to be more efficient to hit RMB and then hit Q to stand up and then to go into a sprinting stance and then shooting again because... If you're rolling around too much, you're wasting time that you could be shooting. So the only time you really want to do a rolling reload is when you're at zero bullets, then start reloading. And as soon as you're about to hit three, you can do a roll and it'll give you the last bullet because when you roll, you get one bullet back. But for the most part, avoid rolling around as much as possible like I do on my stream. I'm just doing it in a chill manner. I'm not going sweaty. But for the most part, you want to spend as much time in shooting the target rather than rolling around. Now let me show you how to efficiently pull these because it does make a difference. As you saw earlier, when I shot them once, it immediately turned around. Even though I got a back attack the first one or two times, it immediately turned around and started charging me. And during that time, I'm going to be doing frontal attacks if I only went one by one. Or I could stop, reload, and waste time. You always want to be shooting, right? So it's much more efficient to shoot multiple at the same time with one bullet. Maybe get some back attacks then. But you're not spending three other bullets or two other bullets on each rhino, hitting them with a frontal shot. Instead, you're going to be maximizing the number of back attacks you get. So we're pulling multiple rhinos here. So each rhino I pull, I'm only spending one bullet. So it's not one back attack and three frontal attacks. Instead, I might get one back attack, but I'm not wasting three bullets hitting them from the front. Now that they're all in front of me, I can easily pick and choose whichever one has its back turned to me, and I can just shoot that. And when it comes to actually killing the rhinos, you want to try to get them down all at pretty much the same time. It doesn't really matter if you do kill one a bit early. I mean, these do lay around quite a while, so you do have time to butcher them. But... If you try to get them as close as possible, you'll avoid ever losing out on one of the bodies by them despawning. And there we go. We have them all down. Now we just butcher them and get our loot and XP and move on. So you don't have to pull just five. You can pull as many as you want all the way up to, I think, like over 10. But it comes down to you how you manage them. And it could get a bit hectic and annoying. So, you know, just do what's comfortable for you. It's more important that you're out there hunting and actually getting XP than theory crafting and not actually hunting right so all right guys now that we went over the basics of leveling let me just give you some example footage of me killing some rhinos
And there you have it. Once you kill them, just loot them, gather them, and you're good to go. Alright guys, that's about it in terms of leveling up your hunting. There's only one spot you need to master, but it is a very chill spot. You do make money from doing this, so it's not going to be as much as like hunting deer or shadow lines, but it's still decent money. So here are the main points to remember. Make sure you have all your buffs. Make sure you're at 5 attack, 5 crit, 5 movement speed, and 5 gathering. Make sure you have all your DPS buffs and everything. Make sure you have your life XP buffs. And for the mechanics, it just takes practice. Keep at it. Uh, learn all the in intricate little details in terms of how to save time. Uh, make sure you're not rolling around too much, wasting time running around here and there. Make your motions as efficient as possible, your distance traveled as short as possible, and always be shooting a target. The more bullets you get off per minute at the right angles, getting those back attack modifiers and stuff, the more DPS you'll do overall. And that's what's important. So make sure you just practice and keep at it. But overall, hunting is a pretty easy thing to pick up and level up. And in the next section, we'll talk about all the money-related aspects of hunting and everything you need to know about making that stack. All right, guys, that's it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. Make sure you check out part one for the basics if you haven't seen it yet. And check out part three when it's out. Link will be in the description down below. The money-making of hunting. Now, please do like, comment, and subscribe if you found it helpful. Check me out at twitch.tv slash impansy where I stream. And if you want to support me, the best way to do so is to share my video with your friends and on Discord. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you liked it, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.